I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them and I will be their Lord forever. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our refuge in trials, our strength in sickness, our comfort in sorrow, spare your people, we pray, that though rightly chastised now by affliction, they may find relief at last through your loving mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. the children of Israel set out on the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert, where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole, and whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord, Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute, and not despised their prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Let this be written for the generation to come, and let his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height, from heaven he beheld the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Jesus said to the Pharisees, I'm going away and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, he is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, you belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I told you from the beginning. I have much to say to you about condemnation, but the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own. But I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. It's a pleasure to welcome you to the chapel here at my home at the Catholic Pastoral Center in Oklahoma City for this celebration of our daily Mass during this season of Lent. We continue our Lenten journey with the people on their travels, their pilgrimage, their sojourn in the desert. And a theme recurs throughout the desert wanderings of the people of Israel as they journey with Moses. And that theme is one of grumbling, of complaining. They grow tired of the wretched food. They grow tired of the inconveniences. They grow tired of the lack of abundant water and forgetting all that God has done for them and the ways in which God has shown and made manifest his favor, his faithfulness, his mercy in his covenant, they begin to complain against him. They begin to lose faith in him. And because of their loss of faith, because of their grumbling and their constant complaining, God chastises them by sending seraph serpents among them, which bit them and caused illness and even death. But as a remedy, God doesn't abandon the people. He instructs Moses to have them build and fashion from bronze uh, a serpent, the very image of that which had caused death and illness among them, and instructs Moses to lift it up on a pole so that whoever looks at this bronze image of this seraph serpent, this image of death and illness, and looks upon it in faith, will be healed. That image of the seraph serpent lifted up over the people, inviting them to turn and to believe and to find healing, is of course a beautiful and perfect image of our Lord, lifted up before us on the cross. Jesus says in the gospel today that when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Jesus is talking about his being exalted, lifted up on the cross. And so the cross, which is this, this image of, of cruelty and, and, and death, uh, becomes a source and symbol, an instrument of healing for all of us. We have been journeying together during Lent from Ash Wednesday until now, and this Lent has turned out to be very different from the one we expected. Uh, and due to the 
coronavirus and COVID-19 and the many restrictions on our travel and free and easy movement, because of the sense of isolation that we are all experiencing at a time like this, and because uh, it seems to be growing more and more intense as more and more people in our communities and our archdiocese and our nation and our state are falling ill because of the virus, um, we're kind of ready to be finished with it, aren't we? We're done. We're wondering how long, O oh Lord, are you going to allow us to suffer this affliction? We might become like the Israelites in the desert and begin to, to grumble and to doubt God's favor, that to doubt that God is with us, to forget God's many, many signs of covenant faithfulness, of his love and mercy for each of us. But instead of grumbling and giving in to that temptation to grumble and to chafe under the chastisement, which this illness and affliction and isolation is for all of us, because we are all in this together, we're reminded in the gospel today to lift up our eyes to the cross, to behold Jesus, who took this burden, the burden of our sinfulness, the burden of our mortality, and suffered not only illness, but even death for us and for our salvation as a sign of God's faithfulness, as a pledge of the Father's mercy for each of us. Though we may be suffering, and some of us much more than others, uh, we are not alone and we are not abandoned. God never abandons us, nor will he ever. So as we continue our Lenten journey, this journey of Lent, unlike any journey of Lent that any of us have ever experienced, we renew our faith today. We lift up our hearts, beholding Jesus crucified for us, our salvation, our hope, our healing, and our victory. God is with us. My brothers and sisters, let us now lift up our hearts and minds in prayer, begging our Heavenly Father to hear our cries. We pray for the needs of the church throughout the world, for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, all bishops and shepherds, pastors of God's people, our brother priests, that they may be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God and not give in to discouragement. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We're civil leaders for our president, our governor, all legislators, all civil servants, that the Lord will strengthen them and give them wisdom and determination and, and servants' hearts to serve the people entrusted to their care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the sick and suffering, especially those who have um, succumbed to COVID-19, the coronavirus, that the Lord might lay his healing hand upon them and strengthen them and lift them up and heal them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are living in fear, for all who are experiencing the burden of isolation at this time and loneliness, that the Lord will remind them and manifest his presence to them. They may find hope and consolation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewed respect for the dignity and holiness of each and every human life from conception to its natural end, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all healthcare professionals, for all who are serving uh, to lift up our community and sustain us during this time of national emergency and global crisis, that the Lord will give them strength and blessing, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life for all of our seminarians, for all young people discerning God's call for their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for the strength of families burdened at this time, that the Lord will assure them of his presence and companionship and accompaniment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of the faithful departed, especially those who have died during this crisis, that the Lord might grant them eternal rest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, merciful Father, look with favor on your church gathered in prayer. 
you know our needs and hear our cries. Grant what we ask in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace. I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Come to me, all who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you, says the Lord.
St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that in receiving your sacrament, we may experience help in mind and body, so that, kept safe in both, we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Please join me in entrusting ourselves, our archdiocese, our families, our nation, all people to the care of the Holy Virgin of Guadalupe. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children we ask you to intercede for us with your son, as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving mother, and gain for our nation and world, and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance, Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother, health of the sick, and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> 